We got Warhol SS in the building. Welcome to Vlad TV. Oh, it's truly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, we've been rocking since day one, so I'm super excited to have you here. Yeah, yeah, we, we've been rocking for a minute, so I'm glad for you know, we finally got time to do this. That's Facts. How you been? I've been good. I mean, everyone's working on music and all that. I was in the studio last night, 12 hours, so. 12 hours? All my sessions, 12 hours. Oh, damn. Yeah. Where do you usually record at? Um, we got a couple private studios that we go to, and then sometimes, you know, if you want a big session with Paramount or like NRG or something like that, but like, no, I'm like private studios and all that. But we about to get our own studio, though. I'm tired of going to other people's studios. For sure. I feel that. And I'm, you got a home studio at all? Uh, nah, I don't. See, like, I record <laughs> too much to not have a home studio. But I be having, like, like engineers that got their mics and their setups and all that just come to the crib, so. For sure. Yeah, yeah, so. I feel, Well, I just want to start from the beginning. On, you know, it. from Chicago, yeah. by way of Atlanta. Um, just what was you know what was it like growing up on the south si southeast side of Chicago? It was I go it was crazy, but like it was cool though. Like, um, uh, it's 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 a lot of culture on the south side of the city, southeast side of the city. Like, we got a whole lot of food. Um, <laughs> we probably like the jerk capital aside from like Jamaica. Oh shit! Okay. You know, I get New York they props and all that, but you know, I, I didn't know Chicago was known for jerk. jerk. Chicago got crazy jerk food. Jerk food, pizza. We got gyros. We got all that. <laughs> and then basketball. You know, Chicago a big basketball city. Really, just you know, Illinois. The whole Midwest is just you know, big in basketball. You know, what I'm saying aside from Ohio, I'm niggas play football, but whatever. But um, uh, yeah. Pretty much my childhood was just basketball, you know, a couple of little street shit that I go on, but that's, you know, a lot of niggas' childhoods. But normally it's just basketball for real. Basketball and music, but I wasn't doing music. I was just around a lot of music. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask if you play basketball because you're kind of tall. Yeah, yeah, I played ball. You were nice with it? Yeah. What? Five. <laughs> <laughs> Five. I still ain't got my manager to go hoot with me, but <laughs> sick. It's crazy. Uh, what did you have? Uh, you know, hoop dreams, NBA. What happened? Um, so I kind of had hoop dreams for a second, cause I ain't gonna lie. I used to be real like, like, like the same way how I be in the studio for twelve hours. I used to be in the gym for twelve hours, like nine a.m., nine p.m. I used to be in the gym all day, all day. But it's like I just. I fake away like fell in love with just basketball and then like really stopped caring about like going to the NBA or something like that. Cause when I fell in love with music, I figured out I was, I probably had a much higher chance of being a rapper than being a basketball player. <laughs> Cause once you, once you get five and you start like playing in like AAU games and all that, you might have been the most five nigga that was like at your school or something like that. And when you start playing against national motherfuckers, like it's not the same. <laughs> not the same at all. You thought you was five, you probably like, Mediocre. Damn. Yeah, no bullshit. What was the moment you fell in love with music? Um, I fell in love with music when I was in the basement of um of my grandma's crib, pretty much just like like listening to shit. Just like I just like was just listening to all type of shit. Like I was reminiscing on shit that I used to listen to when I was a kid with my mom. So I used to listen, listen to my pops and then a mixture of finding my own shit and all that. It was just a whole lot of like different, you know what I'm saying, sounds that I was um, that I was, you know, collecting in like in my grandma's basement, pretty much. So it was like, right there was the time where I just knew. Like when, and then when I started freestyling and all that, I started freestyling because I seen all them pro era freestyles and shit. Really? Joey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Joey Badass, Joey and all Badass, Kirk Knight, and Caution, all that. Yeah, Crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was watching that shit, and that shit made me start freestyling all that. And that's why I freestyle now. I don't write no more music. Really? Yeah. Well, how old were you? I was like. Like sixteen when I like started getting good at freestyling type shit, and I, I made my first like song when I was like seventeen, but I ain't put it up. Yeah. How was it? I don't even remember for real. I ain't gonna lie. All I know it was the uh it was um it was the Wu Tang beat, the casuals, everything around. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that a hard good. beat. Yeah, what that shit was fire. <laughs> God, I bet if I did it now, I'd probably do it way crazy, but. Like, yeah, that's the shit that pretty much put in, put, put me in this shit. For sure. Uh, I know you lived in Chicago for most of your childhood, and then you moved to Minneapolis yeah, to live yeah, with your I father? Yeah, I was in Minneapolis for, for a year when I, um, 
when I was in when I was a junior, I went to, to, to Armstrong for like it was damn even like less than a year because me and my pops we left and went to Atlanta. Okay. But um, yeah, I was out there for like a little moment. I ain't gonna lie, that's that's when like I knew I had the whole image of being a rapper too, cause like I'm coming from big city, I'm coming from you know Chicago and all that, and Minnesota really ain't had no like. No flavor for real. Like, you know, they had sports and shit. And folks had some, you know, good basketball players and all that. But it was like all that culture was from all the surrounding cities around it. Like, they had Detroit culture out there. They had a whole lot of Chicago culture. But, like, I never felt like Minnesota had, like, its own shit. You feel me? It always felt like it was somebody else's shit. So I came out there and I stuck out like a sore thumb. So <laughs> that shit, that shit pretty much, you know, made me want to be like, all right, I'm going to do this shit. Right. How did you stick out? Um, just the way I dress, like they used to be wearing like Aeropostale or Abercrombie <laughs> and like shit like that. I'd be like, ah, oh, that's crazy, bro. I can never wear this shit. <laughs> no bullshit. That's funny. I know junior year in high school, um, you started selling shoes and drugs. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's in my past now, so I can talk about it. Yeah, fine. But yeah, uh, I was really selling, I started selling shoes when I was a freshman in Chicago. I was selling shoes when I was a freshman. Um, but I didn't start selling Zans for real till I was like, Beginning of my senior year. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you get into that? Um, my homie Pops it's like had scripts and zans and shit. Okay. He used to come and like give them to us for like two dollars. I uh, sell them for like five, six, some shit like that. You flipped it real quick. Yeah. Did you? I mean, in school, people was fried out. Like, you see, <laughs> did you see a Euphoria? Uh, I saw one episode, but I, I know it's lie, heavy on that. That's really how kids is when it come to like high school and drugs. Once they get in, in, in like some drugs and all that, the folks gonna fall into that shit. Man, you gotta pull yourself out. But right. Some people never do. Right. <laughs> no, I remember. Bullshit. I remember. You know, and personal experience too. Bars were huge. Yeah, like yeah, right. I was thrown off. Right. <laughs> I was thrown off for some years. No bullshit. Damn. So you were taking it too, because you know they say don't take your own supply. I did not listen to Biggie. <laughs> I was not selling crack. I did not listen to Biggie. <laughs> did not listen to Biggie. What? I was selling Zans on Zans. Dang. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> was it ever a problem? No, that shit was not cool. That shit was not cool at all. That shit was fried. Nah. I mean, it 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 never like got to be a problem. Like I was taking too many because mind you, his pops was giving me these shits for two dollars. You feel me? So it's like. And go scrape in my couch and find like some coins or something like that and be able to get some shit from them. But like, people was pretty much like buying them more than I was taking. So it's cool. And you were selling Jordans too, so how lucrative was that? So look, the way I was doing it, I wasn't really making crazy profit. Like, with the shoes, I was pretty much selling shoes to get other shoes. So it was like, boom, boom, <laughs> boom. It was like no money on top. It was like, I'm all right, boom. I got these shoes. I'm going to sell these, get these two pairs of shoes, and sell that with a pair of shoes. Boom, boom, do all that. Yeah. So, and the Zans, it was like, I think I probably like had like 500 to my name at one time, just like from selling Zans and shit right. like that. But like, at that time, $5, they're selling 100 Zans. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was like, that shit was not expensive then. Like, now them shit's probably like $10, $15, something like that. I don't know. But like, you know, I won't really make too much. <laughs> <laughs> then, and then I think after that, you went to Atlanta, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, so I was selling Zans in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's when I started that shit. Yeah, yeah. And that's when you really were introduced to the music industry? Yep. Yeah. When I got to the A, that's when I was like, all right, cool. This is what the hell I'm going to do. Like when I got to to uh to Atlanta, um, Fani and Uno was like one of the first pe people I met when I was like uh, I was sixteen and all like I was sixteen about to turn seventeen, and that's who who I met them then Jug, Renesi like it's a whole lot of people that was like in like Atlanta. See, I met OG Mako when I was like uh when I first came out there they had like wow. a pop up for two nine like back when two nine was like group and all that when they had Curtis Williams and Jason all them. It was a pop-up for 2 9 and OG Mecca, and I went up there, and I met them, and I was like, I'm going to see y'all in the future. To this day, I know all of them. Right. They're cool people. Dang. Talk about the bond with uh, Fani and Uno, because did y'all just start making music together? I mean, I was like, um, I used to go to their crib. Um, it wasn't their crib, but it was the homie Levi crib. Levi and Babyface Dixon, they, um, 
they had a spot at Stone Mountain. So we used to, uh, they used to like already be there, but I leave school and shit now, like for the weekend and all that. I tell my pops I'm about to go, go to my homie crib or something. My pops one of those super strict niggas because I like, it's not like I was fucking up in school. Just because I was like selling drugs and all that, doing all the bullshit, I still had good grades. So it was like, my pops really ain't had no reason to tell me I couldn't go places and shit like that. So it was like, I was, you know, going over there and shit. And then um, my first time I uploaded a song, I think was, um, I, I uploaded my first shit when I graduated. Like on my graduation night. Oh. Yeah, hell yeah, I graduated and then uploaded some shit in my, uh, we had like a little, a little media room type shit in the little complex we stayed in. And I, go, I went downstairs and all that, uploaded the shit. On SoundCloud? Record and all that, hell yeah. How'd it do? And, uh, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. So I had two SoundCloud pages, but the other one got deleted. So all that old shit was on that last page. So yeah, but. How'd it get deleted? It was, uh, bro, I don't even know for real. I think it was like some copyright infringement shit. I think I got samples some shit. Okay. And this was like before they really did not care about sampling. Right. But yeah. But um. Yeah. But I mean, even before that though, I was I was like, like in the midst of uh going to Stone Mountain and fucking around with them. I used to be fucking around with my man's five a.m. He an artist out of Atlanta too. He sing, and his engineer named named Hollywood Swizz. He just passed. R.I.P. But um, that was, Swizz was like my first, first engineer, like oh, ever. Okay. He the one that helped me find like the way to use my voice, like breath control, all uh, type of shit. So it's it's like, Swizz helped me hold out that shit. And 5 a.m. was the one that was bringing me over there. So, yeah. Between them and and Babyface Dixon and Levi and, and everybody else, that's when I really started jumping into music for real. I Tennessee. was gonna ask because you have a very like unique sound, you know. Yeah. Like, how was that discovering your voice and like how to use your? I so it's like I always had like a real distinctive voice, but it's like it's like I always thought that'd be cool for rapping, but like you never know until you really try. Like at first, I ain't really like my voice at all. Like I ain't like hearing my shit, none of that. But like when people was telling me like, "Yo, you got a crazy voice," like. You just start rapping, and when you get on the song, I can hear it and know it's you, because don't nobody got your voice. So I started hearing that, and I was like, all right, cool. I probably got to embrace my voice a little more. And then I fell in love with my shit, so I was like, that shit was cool. That's fire. And real quick, I know we everyone knows how you got your name. Uh, your mom was a fashion designer. You were really into art. Um, you worked with Basquiat, right? No, no, oh. no. Basquiat was, it oh. was alive in the 80s. <laughs> Wait. No, Bosky had go. He passed away. <laughs> Wait. So look, you Andy Warhol. You Andy Warhol was the man that discovered Bosky. Yeah, yeah. But I ain't got nothing to do okay, with that guy going Did up. you work with an artist though? Um. Okay. Mm -mm. I'm I would love to, but well, but you nah. you related to Andy Warhol? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Like, uh, all right. So it's just saying that Andy Warhol was a drug, and he could get everybody high, but nobody could. Uh, yeah, he could get everybody high, but he couldn't get high off nobody. So, in so many words, that's saying, like, you got an energy that everybody loves and everybody gravitates towards, but you not really hooked on nobody energy. You really could give a fuck. And I was like, all right, yeah, that's pretty much, like, I could see my, I could see a lot of myself in that. So, For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the SS. Uh, Super Sport. So SS Camaros, you know, all that. American Muscle, fast shit. SS. And so <laughs> shitty. Oh, <laughs> hey, yo, how the fuck you know about that, bro? <laughs> how the fuck you know about that? You know, we do our research on that. That's crazy, bro. Uh, all right, so. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. Nah, so shitty was like, it was a group that lasted like a month. <laughs> like, my shit started at Super Sport, then it was so shitty. Then I was like, nah, I'm back at Super Sport. I'm tripping. <laughs> yeah. That's what what does so shitty mean though? Cause when I was growing up, a lot of niggas was wild shitty that I was going up fast. So uh, yeah, it was that <laughs> niggas is so shitty. That's funny as hell. You said it was a short lived group. Yeah, short lived. Short the locals, lived. right? Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, locals. Wow, that's crazy. 
How was bro. that? How was that time? Yo, I was like 15, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yo, how you know about this? That's crazy. But uh, yeah, I was like 15. So locals was like, it was like, uh, it was a group in Chicago called Fonts Nation. And them niggas was rapping and all that. And like, we was close to them. Like, it was like our people. It was like, really, we was Fonts. But it was like, we didn't know all of them. And I can't say I'm a part of some shit if I don't know everybody in this shit. So I made my own shit. So we was pretty much, was, yeah. And locals was pretty much like everybody I knew and then people that in fonts that I knew. So it was like, it, it like locals and fonts nation fake way became like a, a clicked up group type shit. But yeah, that shit was when I was like, it's like 15. That was the first time I ever went to like a show. But it wasn't no real show though. Like, they, that's the shit that like introduced me to like throwing parties okay. and performing at your parties. Like my first, first shows, like the shit that put me on, on, on the map in Chicago, we threw a party and I performed and we broke the floor. Oh, what? We broke the shit straight through. No bullshit. In the first 30 minutes. <laughs> no bullshit. This shit was like. That's scary. It was like the first, I guess, sold out. But it's like, it's no way to know the like capacity or nothing. The tickets, it was just a party. We was throwing a party. And it was like. You know, start performing. That shit was so turnt. We broke the floor through. That's wild. How did you get all the people to come out? Um, in Chicago, I'd be outside. I put it okay. like that. Okay. Motherfuckers know my face. Right. And like they know my face from a whole lot of shit that's not even music. You know what I'm saying? So when I started doing music, people was like, "All right, well, shit, we know him from this, from basketball, from you know what I'm saying." So it was like, "All right, why not support the kid?" So. Is that how you really built your like following? Cause you got, you know, diehard fans. Yeah, so I so my fan base in Chicago started by word of mouth. Like I wasn't even no internet nigga for real. Like when I first had when I first had my first show in Chicago, my first sold out show with Cole, the the Lyrical Lemonade show that had Uzi and brought out Dex and all that. Well, I only had like five thousand followers, something like that. Wow. Five probably less than that, for real. Probably like four thousand followers. You know what I'm saying? So when I came out though, everybody knew Speed Racer. This one, Speed Racer was already out though. 2016? You know yeah, yeah. This so it was like, um, I came to LA in 2016, but that was like at the end of 2016. This is like January type shit. You feel me? Right. So it was like I barely had no followers like that, but people like my shit was spreading around by word of mouth. Like I had more followers on my SoundCloud than on my Instagram. Wow. So it was like, you know, that was that. 